Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Glucon Weekly. This week, joining us is Tommy Sheehan from Red Oxygen, a company specializing in all things SMS and text messaging. Thank you for joining us today, Tommy. And thank, thanks for having me. Welcome. So would you like to give us a quick introduction about yourself and how you got where you are? Um, sure, sure. We're, we're one of the grandparents in the text messaging space. Uh, Red Oxygen was founded 22 years ago in Australia. Um, and uh, when we first started delivering messages, we actually, before the CPAS space even existed, uh, we were delivering text messages off 5110s hanging off a laptop and a bunch of SIMs. So we've been in it a long time. We get it. We get it from a global perspective. We get it from a U.S. perspective. And, and you know, it's, it's fun to be part of an industry in a messaging service that is the most ubiquitous messaging service that mankind has ever known, right? Mm, I yeah. sent a text message to 7 billion devices on the planet. There's only a billion PC. And there's only several billion uh, smartphones. So it's it's really exciting to be a part of that and also be a part of the forefront of this new digital regulation with the campaign registry. Yeah, which is probably the main uh, is probably the main discussion point uh, that there is in the industry today. As part of SignalWire, I do a lot of solutions architecture. So I end up speaking to many people that want to build an idea around messaging and very often the technical part is not even that complicated to be fair yeah the the main the main thing to figure out is a campaign registry which if you don't mind i'm so i'm based in italy i of course know very well what a campaign registry is because i work with it every day but a lot of people especially not in the us are not really aware of what the campaign registry even is so i will if, if you'd like to start from there that would be perfect sure sure so you know I'm going to back up a little bit to 20 years ago. Um, and, and the reason why is this helps us understand where we are today. So intercarrier fees are when carrier A sends a carrier B, they have to pay them some money. Okay. And that was in most government bodies, whether it's the ACCC or EU or so forth, they were always very strict about monopolistic measures in their country. So if, if a carrier had a dominant position, they didn't want to charge them, you know, seven euro cents or whatever, right? So they always had strong regulation as far as pricing and fair, fair market so they could deliver to their consumers. They also had um, strong regulatory bodies as far as which technology they deploy. The U.S. has, has always had a very anti-government, anti-regulation um, mindset and and so consequently like even though i'm an american i started a company in australia i couldn't launch my products and services in the u.s until 2009 because there was no interoperability between carriers right and and it was primarily because of deregulation and the u.s basically said hey laissez-faire put whatever you want up to you put up tdma and cdma and so so the u.s had you know, you couldn't even send a one text message from one carrier to another carrier because interoperability is happening. In fact, the first interoperability between CDMA and GSM was mandated by the Australian government in 2003 when they uh, sold off uh, the remaining portion of Telstra, which is a government owned entity at the time. So there, there's always a strong history of government regulation, intercarrier fees, fairness to the consumer, and so forth. Well, in the U.S., because our numbering schematic, so our landlines and our cell phone numbers are the same. So you don't know that you're calling a cell phone or calling a landline. And so consequently, most Americans did not promote their cell phone on their business cards because they're only given so many minutes per month and so forth. Right. And and early on in the CPAS space, the argument was you can't charge me an intercarrier fee because you're already making money on the back end and you have this whole short code market, right? Well, the carriers obviously can't do that anymore. They can't charge to receive text messages. Oh, they still are with prepaid, which is illegal, but that's a whole other topic. Um, uh, so th they're charging for intercarrier fees. And so now they're like, hey, no, we want a piece of this. And we also want to stop spam. So the carriers are starting to do self-regulation with the campaign registry. And what the campaign registry is, is for data validation. So any company using A to P messaging 
has to register with the campaign registry, right? Who they are, what their website is, what their message content is, um, what their URL is and so forth. And then they're scored and given a campaign ID and then they're allowed throughputs based on the scoring, whether they can send messages. And there are setup fees, there are monthly campaign fees, and then there are additional fees to the carrier. So now you have to pay your CPAS provider, but you also need to pay the carrier fee, a campaign fee. But what this has done is this has tripled the cost of a text message. But go back, it was unconditionally low before. And so now it's going up where there's going to be, there's going to be some pain. One of the problems we're having in this space, the biggest problem is how do we pay for this? Because most SMB SaaS providers have not built in a text messaging component into their software. So if they've written some veterinary clinic software, right? And they may have a thousand vet clinics all over the United States. Well, they sell vet software. They don't sell telecommunication software. So they don't know how many messages this vet office sent versus this veterinary office sent. Or, right? or so what's in the, in the messages even. Or, do or even in the messages. So most of them, and the problem is all these CPAS providers have only been selling to the developer. Well, this isn't a developer problem. It's a business problem, mm. right? So, see, yeah. so, so, so what we do at Red Oxygen, because of our history, we actually built this platform for the mobile operators. We have the unique ability to build the end users. So if you're a veterinary software company and you have a thousand vet clinics, right? And your cost per vet clinic was five to $10 a month in March of 2022. Well, in April, with your setup fees, sign-up fees, monthly fees, those costs could be $25 a month, right? And so now, if you're only getting $100 a month for your software, right? Well, your cost of goods sold to triple, right? So how are you going mm. to manage that, right? So that's where we can help these people. We can help deliver these messages through their favorite CPAS provider, whoever they would like, but we can also bill those end users. We can provide them a flat file to say, hey, this doctor's office sent 10 messages, this doctor's office sent 10,000, this one, you know, you need to bill them this much money and we can set up individual plans. We're doing that for several players now that have said, hey, you know what? We're gonna bypass the CPAS providers because you know, we sell to universities and they're conservative. They don't, you know, our, our, office, our, our emphasis is selling university software, residential management software. We don't, we don't wanna get involved in this. Will you take care of the compliance? Will you take care of the billing and make sure we're compliant and make sure we're profitable, right? Yeah. So we really look as a partner to CPAS providers, a partner to SaaS, SMB SaaS providers, you know, the bigger guys in this space, so let's say your your annual invoice is $10 million a year, right? Well, you're an Uber or you're, you're a, a Grubhub, right? Well, you're just going to either push this traffic um, to your in-app messaging or you're going to, um, um, you know, try to um, reduce your cost or make it more efficient with your SMSs, right? But they have enough people in those departments to keep up the compliance and billing and so forth. It's the SMB SaaS providers that are really going to struggle in this space. And that's what we've been seeing all over the United States. Mm. So uh, I have a few questions, but let's start from, from one. So uh, I can imagine, what I, I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone who's doing this for the first time. Uh, I can't imagine how a campaign registry registration will look like for someone wanting to send out, I don't know, appointment reminders who are just outbound. So when mm -hmm. I want to set up so I can tell uh, my customers of my whatever law firm or my yeah. my car repair shop, hey, your car uh, should be delivered tomorrow morning or whatever. Come in yeah. at 10 and I'll and we'll change your yeah. uh your break yep. discs or whatever. But yep. the um, what if I'm wanting to set up something that is conversational, but still machine to human? You know, there's chatbots all over. Yeah, I mean, but and... it's still, it's yeah, I mean, it's still going to be what is your, what is your, I mean, they're, they're really trying to make sure there's no spammers, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and, and, and that's, and really that's, it's really more about identity than 
you know, I, I got an amazing spam text the other week, and this is my space, right? It said, you spent $197 at this CVS store, which is a drugstore here in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, and click on this link for Bank of America. You know, it was like Bank of America, whatever. Mm -hmm. It was a deep URL. Oh, yeah. Totally. I mean, and, it was brilliant. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, my God, they're going to steal so many grandmothers, you know, credit card numbers. And it's just, I mean, they're getting smarter. And but but we need to be able to identify that MSISDN number is a track and they need to be held accountable. They mm -hmm. need to be fined ten thousand dollars per text message because they're stealing money from you know poor innocent people that are getting hacked. That's what this campaign registry is about, right? And we have to fight spam because you know your phone is I mean it the power of text messaging is the most ubiquitous form of communication, but it's also the most intimate form of communication, right? So you're going to look at a text message before you look at an email, before you pick up a phone call, right? So it is so yeah. important. So it's so important. We keep the integrity of text messaging up. So yes, it's a pain in the ass. Yes, it's expensive, but I believe this will make the digital data channel more trusted, right? And I think it's good for the overall industry. Um, and if it's conversational, you know, in, in yeah, your yeah. doctor's office, you know, it, you're or you're selling shoes or whatever you're doing, right? You're a legitimate business. You're not going to be sending. Oh, so I see. So you said you're supposed to send examples of messages. Yeah. Then you're not going to be held to those templates as the only messages you can. Yeah, send. I mean, it, it, it's really trying to get out the bad guys, right? Mm -hmm. You know. It, it's 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 like you know your crazy aunt saying crazy stuff on Facebook. Well, she's still allowed to do it, but who's the originator of it? Like we need to keep this yeah. for all of our democracy, right? And this is a template because all of our I mean, you know, one of the problems we think we have in these open societies is we're like, hey, this is great, you know, kumbaya, open, you know, everyone can speak their mind. Well, these nefarious actors are employing people to spread disinformation and lies on all different topics and it doesn't matter what side of the fence you are and as a globe we have some very serious conversations to have whether it's global warming social justice but they're complex issues there's lots of stakeholders and unless we have a public forum we can have decent and thoughtful conversations whether via text message or social media platforms we have to do this right and, and i applaud this because this is our first step right this needs to be implemented, not just in the United States, but globally, and not just on text messaging, but on all digital platforms. Identify who you are, right? When I was listening to the FCC chairman, former Ajit Pai, speak last week at the MEF, Mobile Economic Forum in Vegas, and, and the poor guy, I guess he had, he, had, he had denied a merger with Sinclair Broadcasting, and, and Trump sent off a nasty tweet to him, and you know, his his life and his family were threatened, right? Mm, you know, yeah. they, they sent messages to say, oh, hey, we know where these five preschools are around your house. I mean, that's horrible. And if they have anonymity, right? But we need this digital regulation to help clean up this mess. So uh, one thing that comes to mind uh, was, was sort of misled on the template and the messaging templating thing is that if you, well, you certainly know, when you set up a short code, for sending a mm -hmm. short code, you have to provide actual message templates, as in yeah. you have to really write down what you're going to be sending. So if your yeah. reminder is, uh, uh, Mr. Sheehan, you have a meeting for tomorrow at yeah. 10, the template has yeah. to be, Mr. Name, you have an appointment <laughs> for tomorrow at time. And then you have to yeah. stick to that. And that is really, yeah. that's really super important. And, but yeah. that's not how the campaign registry works, right? That's just short. No, no. And, and, and the campaign registry, it's 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 certainly not perfect, right? And it's not. But their intent is good, right? Their intent is what we should all be striving for. But, you know, short codes was part of the argument for the CPAS space that, hey, you can't charge me intercarrier fees, you know, you know, 12 years ago. Um, and, and now they are, but the short code, the reason why short codes never really took off was because, you know, it took, you know, eight weeks to get one approved. And then you share a short code. It's like sharing a toothbrush. You don't know who you're sharing it with, right? You can be have totally legitimate content, but you know, the guy doing the short code you're sharing it with may not. Right. So, you know, short codes, they were too, 
they went too extreme. They were too arduous. Yeah. Never took off. Uh, and literally in our 22 years, we've never sold one. So oh, oh, wow. Well, I can say I can say we 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 have many active customers in short code on signal wire, but I I mean many means a handful, not 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 yeah, not yeah. I don't think and, it's and there's a place for short codes too. Like I, I'm not saying the short codes are great. I mean if you're doing high volume and you've yeah. got to have high throughput and you need to be a trusted brand, and let's say you are, you know, the California Department of Health and you're sending out vaccination notices, like yes, like you want to be able to trust that brand. A few related questions. Uh, someone might not know, but it's, it's actually super interesting. If I have a fixed a landline, and I'd like to start using messaging as my as a new mechanism for reaching out to customers, but I want them to be going out using the same number, is that even possible without changing the telephone right. side? Of so, this? in 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 GSM only countries, you're allowed to do basically number spoofing. You could put alpha oh. headers in that. You could also put um, your cell phone number, right? Okay. Yeah. In the U.S., because we still have a fragmented space. I mean, initially we had TDMA, CDMA, IDEN, you know, GSM, GSM 1900, all these spectrum. So you can spoof the originator um, mm -hmm. in GSM only countries. So like in Europe and Asia and Australia and so forth, you can. Yeah, you you can. And uh, I think there's also something called hosted messaging, but that might be only for voice over IP numbers. So the ability yeah. to split the phone number and have voice go somewhere and have the messaging go elsewhere. Yeah. That's uh that's a different uh that's a different yeah. type of thing. Yeah, yeah. we get so, we are uh, to that all the time. <laughs> so do you need to be a few questions around the campaign registry, which is I find very fascinating. Do you need a US entity to be able to register? for the campaign registry. Say, yeah, I'm a company based in Italy and we sell the best uh, mozzarella in the world and we'd like to make people, <laughs> to have people know that. Uh, do you need to register? Or can uh, you need yeah, to register? If you're sending to the US, you need to register. Um, but once again, they're not, they're not, so if you're selling mozzarella, right, they're not going to be, you know, they're not against you. You know, it's just like, but you still need to identify who you are, right? Yeah, for the most part, um, that's going to be re not reminders. Well, alerts now that you tell me something like your order is on the way. Since mozzarella, yeah, so yeah, I, it, I use it, this example on purpose. Since mozzarella is, uh, well, at, can, can stay out of, of the fridge for like six hours, right? Before mm -hmm. it, uh, it's paused. So I send, I will send you a message when I'm delivering to make sure I find you at home. Yeah. So that's actually important. It's, it's uh, that, that's something that might be a, but that's legit. So just for, to finish the mozzarella train of thought, that shouldn't be a problem because I'm sending. No, out no. I mean, I mean, we, we've got some Canadian, we've got customers that are delivering in the U.S. that we've registered with the campaign registry. Oh, so that are not uh, U.S. entities. Yeah, but once again, they're they're just trying to get the bad guys, right? Like it's 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 all about not the mozzarella cheese people. It's all about getting the guys trying to pretend like they're Bank of America trying to steal money from grandma right so if you uh, if you were to uh, so if you were to state which types of messages which still which are still legit are harder to get through the campaign registry I've had bad experiences with trying to well, get any financial I mean, information through whether or not it's legit or whatever yeah I mean I mean we had we had some blocking with Harvard University right hmm. wow. and, and and so, but they had a Amazon gift card in there and there, cause they're trying to do like reach out for surveys to, uh, to do research, right? Which is, you know, Harvard's a very legitimate institution and, and, and their message was, but we were like, hey, you know, when these short URLs or anything with a URL, because, you know, the big data, they're thinking, oh, this is this, they're trying to scam people, right? Um, even though they're not, it's Harvard University. So, but yeah, I mean, so when you do the URL, like, especially like the short URLs and so forth, those you might have struggling with or anything with um, that's, you know, um, anything that's like kind of marketing related, right? Uh, oh, but, yeah. So, so in this case, uh, the university was actually handing out free money when it was flagged as spam because it was suspicious. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, they, so they, they do a lot of research projects. So, I mean, we had UCLA do a research project with smoking cessation and, you know, they're trying to get, you know, and, and even homeless people have, have cell phones, right? So they, they would communicate and like, 
But as long as you can communicate that to the, the registry and like, hey, this is the purpose, this is their intent. They're not here to scam people. Um, you know, if, if they participate in this research project, you know. Um, Another difficulty I've seen with people trying to use messaging, even after register for the company registry, through the help of various companies that offer the service, uh, uh, such as Red Oxygen and SignalWire, the uh, URLs and messages. So is there any tips in particular you can give to people about URLs? I know they don't like the short ones. Hmm. Yeah, but we have trouble with people having their own short domain because it looks yeah, like I something it, it, weird. When, when you do those tiny URLs, you know, I think those are the ones that kind of, and, and it's kind of in the big data, right? So it's not, you mm -hmm. know, they've written some algorithms in the big data. So it's just like, hey, you know, oh, these people are trying to scam you because a lot of times in the past, like even in this Bank of America scam text that I got, you know, they had a, a fully, you know, written URL. So obviously the, the spammers are getting more and more intelligent. Hmm. So you still want to avoid URL shorteners. That's probably the main. Yeah, thing. I mean, just just and work with your provider. You know, get some guidance. We typically, you know, do a lot of coaching with our customers on 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 how we can help them with their. I mean, we coached Harvard on like um, so it, we you know we help we coach our customers on how you know. How to, how to have an effective message, how it works better, how you can be compliant. Um, and, and that's really where we succeed. And that's why we... So um, one, thing I, one thing I'm curious about, uh, is number of messages part of the problem when you're trying to get deliverability? I'll, I'll explain. If people are trying to do alerts, we've seen people that we had an alerts app set up and they had five appointments, fine. Then the company grows and it suddenly it's 100 appointments, fine. Then one day it's 500 appointments because they become the largest, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah, breakthrough yeah. changing I, 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 operation I, 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 in, in America. It, it's going to get even worse because there's the throughputs are based on the carrier, which is bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you're exactly right. Because, like, you know, the, um, the throughputs, and so based on how they score depends on how much throughput they get per carrier. And I don't know the, the, but, there is no consistency. They don't tell you to be to be very to be very honest. They don't actually tell you what the actual actual rules are because otherwise well, we'll be able and, to... and, and they're changing on a daily basis. Like, you know, I just heard last week that T Mobile was gonna waive their fifty dollar setup fee, right? So I mean, and I know the CTIA wants this to be self regulatory, but if they don't get their act together, I, I mean I would really like to see some federal regulation so we can keep it consistent and fair. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm sure a lot of yeah. CIA people won't like me saying that, but government yeah, the actual anti-spam rules are never really they never really tell anyone, right? You can infer that something will be treated as spam or not, but it's generally never actually disclosed. They, they I feel like it makes sense, I want to say. But but true. always always remember that laws and regulations always come after, right? You know, after the mess has been made. And and it's always, you know, it's hard for, you know, um, regulators and politicians to keep up with it. I mean, this is our space. So obviously we're very well versed in it. We understand it. But, you know, you talk to a senator's in office, uh, which I have. I talked to my senator, Catherine Mas Masto in Nevada and, and Senator Klobuchar of Minnesota about this. And most of them were unaware of this new regulatory, but this kind of gives us some precedence to, hey, maybe we can incorporate this uh, in a broader bill. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, uh, I, I see, uh, the, the example I made earlier actually happened to a customer of us. Small company starts being, they were they're do, they do, uh, prof, not professional, I mean, uh, craftsman services like uh plumbing and roofing sure. and whatever they start with a hundred uh, plumbers and all goes great then they become a thousand then they get ten thousand workers yeah. using their network and suddenly one morning they just send out the reminder that for each of the customers hey your technician is going to be there at 10 a.m or whatever and bam everything goes down completely because they were were past, past some kind of rate and it became spam so yeah is probably not the only component 
Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, I mean, we used to just provide more virtual 10 DLCs, like, you know, so th they had more traffic. We knew, you know, there was always like a, a limitation of, of one message per second. So, you know, you yeah. calculate, okay, hey, I want to send out 100,000 messages. We're like, okay, you know, it, but you, your volume gets, and that's where short codes come in. Because like, if you're doing high volume um, and it's the same message, you know, maybe the shortcuts and the throughputs, you know, you know, you got to get these messages out ASAP. Maybe short codes are a better fit for you, right? But if, if, if it's, you know, n not so high volume, uh, maybe 10 DLC, 10 digit long codes are better for you. Yeah, I feel like the alerts, uh, I mean, hurricane alerts or um, flood alerts, whatever, need to go out through short code. That's probably yeah. how they do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, but, but that's, that's really where you need your, 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 your provider to help you with that, to say, to work mm, with you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, no, 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 no. Let me migrate this. Let me coach you, coach you with content, coach you as far as what's, what's the best um, avenue, which 10 DLC, which area codes, uh, if it's a short code solution, you know, we're here to help. Yeah, that's uh, that's important. It's so complicated to navigate that. Uh, uh, well, one one related question, which leads me into pricing discussions, like without actually talking about price, it's currently almost unpredictable to know exactly how much a message will cost, right? Because the uh, depends on the carrier fee. You don't know which carrier is carrying the number you're sending to. So unless you look it up before. Yeah, I mean, you, you need to, well, I mean, the carrier fees are almost on par, you know, mm, so, so yeah, you know, it makes sense that they that, averaged out, right? Yeah, they're, they're about average out. And there, I mean, there's, there's some change. So I, I think you could have a, a, you know, within a 10th of a cent. So I think it's, it's, I mean, unless you're spending, you know, millions and millions of dollars or and doing, you know, billions of messages every month, um, you should be able to be okay. Be okay. And even there, let's say that of course you'd average out on the number because mm, people are roughly distributed i mean according to their market share so effectively you're sending out a billion messages a month you're probably going to know because it's a percentage that makes sense like 20 percent sure. of people are in this carrier so 20 percent of people are going to cost like that when you're, yeah. you're at that scale it's going to sort it out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably and they're, they're pretty much on par i mean the only thing that's really glaring were those uh, setup fee that T-Mobile had that no one else did? That was like, whoa, you know, why are you charging us fifty bucks per campaign for a was setup? Was that fee? removed? Was did they remove those fees at one point? I, I mean, I heard the rumor they were doing it yet last week, but I don't think there's been an official announcement. So, oh, so hopefully, still I mean, I heard it from several people in this space. So that's yeah. good. Great. So, uh, well, thank you very much. I mean, from someone, Europe, interestingly enough, just to cap off the discussion, Europe has uh, much different uh, rules and it's actually less regulated, but it's hard, easier to get banned than the U.S. So everybody has their own, their own set of rules. But the campaign registry actually makes a lot of sense because it allows you to make Reasonably sure, if you're working with a reputable company, with someone who knows what they're doing, it makes you reasonable sure that your messages will be going out. Yeah. Europe, many, many places in Europe have this, uh, you know, banned by content or banned by volume or a mixture of both. And there's literally nobody you can appeal to. <laughs> like, it's just, uh, it's a blacklist. You're on there for three months, period. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one of the things that Europeans said, because they had intercarrier fees, that kind of helped reduce the spam, right? So if someone was going to have to pay, I remember this is years ago, Orange Telecom was charging seven euro cents for an intercarrier fee. Um, wow. Which, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, so, so that's certainly a deterrent for spam, you know. But one other thing that I want to make is, and these carriers still have these things open, they're free email to SMS gateways, which is BS, right? I mean, they need because the spammers are just going to. I don't know whether they shut them down recently, but if they're going to launch the campaign registry, they need to shut those, those, um, you know, the, those gateways down today. Well, 
uh, yeah, I think there, there's a lot of work, but um, again, people should come. Well, come say hello to Tommy, come say hello to me, and we'll sure. we'll help you sort out the all uh, uh, sort out your situation. Messaging is still a very good tool, as you stated. It's still probably the only uh, medium that really gets to everybody because yeah, yeah, I mean, and then phone, you can receive messages, right? Yeah, so it's exciting. And there are there are other avenues, but I feel like messaging is going to stay. In fact, there are some forensics reasons why messaging is the only way used to send some kind of code, etc. Like if there's a, there was a way to send them through instant messaging or whatever, companies will do it because it will be cheaper. But they don't because that removes all accountability. That's why OTPs are sent via messages. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is, you know, you look at the WhatsApp data and this this data is a couple of years old, but WhatsApp penetration rate is much higher in authoritarian regimes. I think their most popular uh, uh, country is Saudi Arabia. Right. Because, A, you know, the, the carrier will shut down the SMSCs arbitrarily and so forth. Or you have high SMS costs like Germany. So. Those you see that. So another thing the carriers need to be cognizant of is like, that's great. We're doing this, but don't make it too painful because people will switch. Right. So don't make it yeah. too painful, too costly because um, people will find other avenues to deliver information. Yeah. But messaging is just great. It's yeah, keep it fair, cheap, simple and, and, and trusted. I know entire sections of population don't really know how to use anything else. And there is, uh, yeah, there's that yeah. too. Like there, uh, there's that too. Sure. That's also a discussion for voice. We have customers doing services for the elderly that go through voice because they're, you know, it's easier. Even if I mean, just sending you a reminder, hey, did you take your medication or whatever, is very important when someone is maybe not living close to your house or you can drop by that day. And messaging is really useful for that because. Everybody knows how to use SMS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, uh, well, uh, Tommy, thank you very much for joining us today. It was it was a pleasure. And the campaign registry not something we talk about very often. So you shed okay. a lot of light on something that might be confusing to some people and trying to get into the space. Well, we'll reach out. We're here to help. We're help CPAS providers, SaaS providers, end users. Um, happy to help. Awesome. And well, uh, I don't know if you're joining us, but you might still be in time. There is our, our um, conference is in two weeks. It's called Klucon. It's actually not in two weeks. It's less than two weeks because it starts on October 15th in Chicago. Uh, go look up Klucon.com and take a look. Right. We still, I mean, if you, it's, uh, it's go, we're going to put some stuff on video too, but it's always interesting. There's a lot of people from the telecoms, from the technology That's industry right. coming. I'll be at the, um, um, Communications Cloud Alliance Conference in Chicago as well. So, oh, nice. So, yeah, so I'll, I'll be there too. So we'll, we'll meet there. <laughs> well, cool. Okay. Well, then we'll chat again soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. So, thank you very much for, uh, for joining us and for the rest of the people. I'll see you next week. Have a nice week. Goodbye. Thanks.